Welcome to Orange Weekly, presented by Kraus Health. Alongside Mike Curtis, I'm Nate Mink. Coming up, we will take a look back at SU's 30-0 loss at Louisville and turn the page and look ahead to North Carolina State in what will be a very different senior day for the football team. Later, Mike Waters joins us to preview SU basketball's opener against Bryant, and we'll hear from Dino Babers in Syracuse Soundbites as he takes a look at what can fix SU's offense in 2021. But Mike, let's start there. The Orange shut out for the first time since 2016 at Louisville. They have really failed to move the ball with any sort of consistency much of the last year and two years, really. When you look at what Dino has to work with in terms of personnel and what he has to change and improve on going into 2021, where do you begin? Um, I think you got to begin at that wide receiver spot. Um, all the other position groups are pretty much solidified as far as quarterback and running back. But I think he needs to really put a focus on who's going to be there at the receiver spot. You got Taj Harris coming back for another year for a senior year. But I think if you can get someone who can be kind of that deep threat for the quarterbacks, whoever they may be next year, um, I think it'll be a good chance to improve the offense. The running back position obviously got ravaged because of injury and opt out this year. But you saw Sean Tucker, a true freshman, emerge as a bright, as a bright point for this offense. He looks to be a cornerstone piece moving forward. I, I look at the offensive line and the quarterback position, and like you, I agree the receiver position still has some work to do in development and, and establishing more guys on the perimeter that are really big bodied and physical on, on the edge. But I look at, at really, again, what Dino has talked about for much of this season being strong up the middle. And I think you have to really solidify your offensive line and you have to solidify the quarterback position going into 2021 as well. Well, Mike, the quarterback position obviously is a bit up in the air this week for North Carolina State. Jacoby and Morgan took a big shot against Louisville and left the game with an apparent head injury. His status remains uncertain. Put on your coach's hat. You have a fifth-year senior in Rex Culpepper who relieved Morgan immediately in the game, and then you saw Dylan Markowitz, the other true freshman from Texas, get some snaps late against the Cardinals. Do you roll with the freshman again, or do you turn back to Culpepper against North Carolina State? It's a lot of pressure, Nate. I can't lie. Um, but if I was a coach and if I had two games left, um, I would definitely throw my freshman quarterback out there and put Dylan Markowitz in the game. Um, we saw Dino Babers kind of do the same thing with Jacoby and Morgan at the end of the Clemson game. He allowed Jacoby in to get in there and get a few snaps. Didn't allow him to pass the ball. A couple games later, you saw Morgan get an increased role in the offense. And I think Dino Babers kind of does the same thing with Markowitz. Um, maybe we see him in the first half. Maybe we see him in the second half. But I think he definitely plays some type of role in this week's game against NC State. Yeah, I think there's two big variables here as it pertains to this. One is obviously Morgan's health. We don't know what his status is for Saturday. And two, I really think it depends on how ready Markowitz is. You know, I think uh, Dino has talked about it's difficult to prepare multiple quarterbacks in a week when he has enough problems for trying to prepare one quarterback. Well, here now you might be getting uh, first team reps for Markowitz, maybe the most extensive amount of first team reps he's gotten all season. You have a fifth year guy in Culpepper who knows what he's doing out there. Maybe you platoon them. Maybe you start the game with Culpepper and you work in Markowitz throughout the game with the packages that he's most comfortable with. Or maybe you just turn Markowitz loose all week in practice and, and get him ready to, to make his first start on Saturday. We shall see. Either way, another big underdog on Saturday. The Orange haven't been favored in the game all season. I Spoiler, they're not going to be favored next week against Notre Dame either. Uh, prediction time, Mike. How do you see this one going on Saturday? Well, after not scoring any points um, in last week's game, um, and we don't know who's going to be starting their quarterback this week, um, I'm not so sure about what they'll do offensively. So I got to go with NC State 30. Syracuse seven and I think that seven comes from a defensive touchdown wow so another another scoreless effort for the for the offense I'm with you I, th I think North Carolina wins the game comfortably you know past weeks I've been putting 24 27 points up on the board for Syracuse and every week it's just making me look a little little bit more silly uh I have North Carolina State winning the game 31 14 I really think North Carolina State, you know, they just held Liberty and a, and a really good Liberty offense into the, into the teens last week. They have a really strong running game with Zonovan Knight, and they have, they have two quarterbacks that have played well. Bailey Hockman is probably going to be the guy uh, 
with Devin Leary still on the shelf. Uh, but North Carolina State can run and they can play defense, and that portends to be a bad formula for the Orange on Saturday. So 31-14 is my score. Uh, it will be a senior day, unlike any other. Dino Baber said earlier the week there will be no pregame senior festivities or a senior lap after the game on on Saturday. Let's hear from the coach on what he has to do to get his offense turned around heading into 2021. Let's go to Syracuse Soundbites. You know, you're always looking to be green and growing, not red and rotten. So we're going to always look to adapt and change. But when you look around college football, you know, you look at what Oregon's doing and their offensive coordinator came from, I believe, Mississippi State, who came from Penn State, who Sports Illustrated article stated that he copied everything that we did from Eastern Illinois University in 2012. You look at what Tulsa has been able to do running the exact same offense. I think young Bryles is at Arkansas and they're shaking up the SEC for the very first time, not including the other son-in-law of Mr. Bryles being at Ole Miss as the offensive coordinator and the job that they've been doing. When you look around, this offense is still around the country and it's still doing fantastic things. I think there is a point, there comes a point where you do have to adapt and improvise based off of your situation in your conference. So I think you're absolutely right on that. And I think that like any good teacher, okay, and a teacher and a coach is the same thing, is that you need to go back and you need to study your game plan and make sure that you're doing everything that is not only cutting edge, but is giving your students the best opportunity to be successful. We're joined now by Mike Waters to talk a little SU hoops. Mike, the game against Brian on Friday at 3 p.m. is still scheduled to go on, but SU's prep has been disrupted due to the coronavirus. How has that disruption impacted their prep for Friday's game? Well, I would imagine it's been a significant impact. Uh, they haven't been able to practice for over a week. Uh, I know for at least a, a good portion of that, and maybe in all, but uh, the players weren't even able to go into the Mellow Center individually and get up shots. Uh, basically, the facility was closed to them, and they were all supposed to be quarantining. So if you can imagine – you know, shutting everything down, no practice, uh, no individual workouts, uh, nothing allowed, all before your season opener, um, I would imagine that's going to have a significant impact. And, uh, but they're going to, at least it appears, that uh, Syracuse is going to push forward. And uh, having given the, been given the go-ahead after clearing all the, the, the medical protocols, uh, the team has been testing negative uh, on multiple tests, uh, no other COVID positives uh, since Jim Beheim had his positive test and one other member of, of the program also tested positive. So uh, clean since then, it looks like Syracuse is going to play Brian on Friday afternoon. With the starting and stopping of, of practice, why is it important for SU to play this game on Friday? Well, I think from most coaches' uh, viewpoints, you want to play as many games as you can when you can. And if it's one that you don't absolutely have to cancel or postpone, you want to go ahead and bank it because – you don't know what's coming. You don't know how many other games you might lose uh, to a COVID outbreak either here in Syracuse uh, within the program or with some of the other schools that you're playing. Guys like Jim Beheim, he likes to play a few non-conference games before he gets to the ACC. Yes, eventually they will have 20 ACC games, but you know, even then you don't know if, if all of them are getting in. So I think one, Jim wants it for a little bit of preparation before he plays some ACC games. And remember, he's going to play a three ACC games before New Year's. So, you know, you're going to get some conference opponents soon. So I think he wants to, you know, get his team a little prep time. The other thing, too, like I said, you want to bank as many games as you can uh, while you can. Bryant scheduled to open their season on Wednesday. So Bryant will have a game possibly under their belt by the time they reach the Carrier Dome. A couple of local products for Bryant also making a homecoming trip of sorts. Tell us about Luke Sutherland and Charles Pride, Mike. Yeah, you know, I, I feel bad for the two kids. I, I spoke with them uh, earlier this week. Uh, Luke Sutherland uh, from West Genesee High School. He, he transferred to Bryant uh, last summer from uh, Siena, where he spent his freshman year last season. And Charles Pride, who played at both CBA and then at Liverpool. In fact, he, you know, he led Liverpool to a New York State championship in 2018. Following year, Luke Sutherland led West Genesee to a New York State title. So, you know, these two local kids are coming home, and I, and I feel bad for them because normally – you know, when a, when a visiting team comes in, especially non-conference, 
and then they get a game at the Dome. If they got a couple local kids on the roster, it's always really cool to see all the friends and family in that section right behind the visiting team's bench. And there's always a little bit more life and pop in that visitor section when you have a local kid or two on, on the roster. But this year with no fans in the stands, like, you know, so Luke Sutherland's, you know, mom and dad and family and Charles Pride's family and friends and stuff, you know, they're not going to be there. In fact, the guys weren't even sure if, the, if they were going to be allowed to cut loose from the team hotel and go see family. Because <laughs> here they are coming into town basically on Thanksgiving and playing the day after. I, they didn't know if they were going to be able to see family either go to family's house or maybe have some family come and, and maybe they could visit in the lobby for just a little while. So a very unusual homecoming for two local kids at, uh, playing for Bryant. A very unusual homecoming in what will be a very unusual college basketball season. That's it for this week's edition of Orange Weekly. For Mike Waters and Mike Curtis and our good friends at Krause Health, thank you very much, and we'll see you next week.